So now I'll be going through some real bit of like, you know, reflection on all the things I've gone through usually in my undergrad period in chemistry. And then one topic that struck my mind was covalent, specifically coordinate covalent bonding. And this is quite crucial because, hey, back then it's like, do we really care about addressing that particular type of bonding? Because usually on the particular electronegativity series usually in terms of the polling unit we actually have designated sections for different bonding like ionic bonding covalent bonding and that of well in this case polar covalent and non-polar covalent bonding and all this spectrum actually comes into play when dealing with you specific other segments of how to identify specific bonding like for example we have the electrostatic potential mapping and also that of the Debye unit which is aka known to be called the dipole moment and all these are really interesting ways to be able to highlight how bonding works now how are you going to be able to address that particular question coordinate covalent bonding how are you going to be able to express that in terms of written form and is it possible to actually distinguish that when you are creating a compound which determines specific type of bonds or shows different type of bonds in there now the big one comes into play what is actually that particular type of bond which is a coordinate covalent bond this is where lone pairs are actually used to create bonds and usually the lone pair is found in a specific atom in a covalent compound now this covalent compound usually is polar covalent bond or compound in nature and it's quite crucial to be able to highlight that in your specific foundations and from there different types of compounds or atoms specifically in a compound do have lone pairs either that of nitrogen or oxygen and those two are really crucial in there now there's some others like rarely carbon um, are involved in there but is unlikely to have that type of particular type of situation happening there are other types of co atoms that you might come across yeah usually either in group five and group six sometimes you do have transition metals usually involved in coordinate systems now we're not going to dive into that because that is really complicated but looking at just that particular segment there are other variations to that may happen which is usually in from group 3 or, or group 13 all the way to group 17 but anyways just bringing it back to that particular group we actually see that hey boron do has a little bit of an influential stand in terms of creating that particular form of bond which is the coordinate bond and so looking at various examples we do have examples like in this case ammonia when you start building your lowest structure you will notice that ammonia hey is polar covalent and we actually addressed that on previous videos which is quite crucial and from there one step further is looking at how you introduce a proton in this case a hydrogen cation and in this particular case it doesn't have an electron so introducing that into ammonia all you have to do is just bring in hydrochloric acid and hydrochloric acid has the hydrogen and chlorine and so by so doing the bonding pair is going to be broken into a lone pair that is going to be transferred to chlorine from chloride however the hydrogen is actually picked up by the lone pair on the particular nitrogen so the nitrogen focus is the one of the ammonia so therefore that nitrogen lone pair involved in the formation of a bond with the hydrogen which is the card ion results in that particular formation of the coordinate bond now forming ammonium ion is quite interesting because you can't honestly distinguish those particular bonds or indistinguishable that is the right word really struggling with words right now but you know bear with me so it's quite interesting to see that play out and it's quite fascinating to see that the overall charge which depends mainly on the nitrogen form of charge is positive now the other particular compounds that you might come across is the hydronium 
iron which is also positive charge and in that particular case when you're building your lowest structure keep in mind that when you have an overall charge that is positive it means that you're losing electron now the number of electrons depending on depends on the integer that is beside that particular charge which is in this place time but on the other hand you have a negative sign it means that the overall compound has already obtained some amount of electrons and now that cleared out you can actually focus on the negative ones like for example in this particular notes we actually looked at not only the specific nitrate but also we looked at bf4 all in this case negative one and so all those are really interesting to actually address and that is where boron comes into play now boron boron is quite interesting because it's in group three and you know that group three is usually you know obtains the octet by losing the three electrons but boron is kind of the exceptions as well usually it forms bonds to be able to form covalent bonds to be able to obtain octet it can expand its octet to get to eight and by so doing the neutral state or neutral state yes specifically looking at the formal charge of boron has just three bonds around it once it has three bonds we can perform the three minus six over two because that six comes from the number of bond electrons that are involved in boron and the formal charge of boron will be zero in that particular case as long as there's no lone pair on boron and what that means is that boron can obtain more electrons which makes it to be a lewis acid when it is in its natural state before it actually performs that particular type of reaction and now on the other hand looking at lewis base we do have ammonia which has its lone pair and is willing to donate its lone pair and therefore it actually results in the formation of a positively charged nitrogen while on the other hand you have boron which has its negatively charged state and so therefore you'll form a lewis acid compound as a result of that particular type of reaction so it's really interesting to see how that particular form of coordinate covalent bond is applicable to lewis acid and lewis base and it's really wonderful to come to the conclusion that overall when forming charges of compounds we usually covalent compounds those charge actually comes from its original form which is its neutral state when the neutral state reacts with something by using its lone pair and therefore lone pair forming a bond is indicator of that particular form of coordinate covalent bond so i really implore you guys to check the notes out on my specific website and you should be able to enjoy the full resources that out there and how i was able to come around with that particular concept of coordinate covalent bond and there are some notes and more of them that will have videos addressing how i came about that the challenges i had in terms of finding resources and also looking at how to you know think about examples that actually balances out and gives a big picture on how this particular concept works and many other concepts work so thanks for following me through this trail appreciate it hit the comment down below let me hear your thought about this particular type of bond and whether you found this particular bond really re relevant i would say in your studies in chemistry when it comes to lewis acid reactions or just determining the lewis structure of charged compounds all the same see you on the next video stay smart as always and believe in yourselves